Today we're going to expand Tasmodo utilizing the Node MCU using the I squared C protocol. We're going to add temperature and humidity sensors, a pressure sensor, infrared and lux, which is light sensors, analog to digital sensor, and also expand the GPIO pins out to 16 pins, all utilizing only two pins on the Node MCU. You can apply the same basics to a Sonoff Basic and several other different switches that are based on ESP8266s that you can flash and have at least the two GPIO pins open. Let's get started. So what is I squared C? It's a communication bus that Tasmoda supports and only requires four pins per sensor. Voltage in, which is going to be your 3.3 volts, ground, clock, and data. The clock and the data, those will tie to GPIO pins. So just to show you on a Sonoff Basic, you can hook these sensors to Sonoff Basic. It's the Sonoff Basic with header pins installed. If you would attach from the 3.3 volt pin, and you could even utilize the RX and TX pins. We've shown you in previous videos how to use that in various digital input and output sensors. You can use the RX and TX to a assign them to the clock and the data pins for I squared C and then use the to the ground and then you still would have GPIO 14 to attach to any other sensors you might need and you can attach more than one sensor on the bus as long as the addresses of each sensor is different on a Sonoff basic you could easily attach one of my favorite the BME 280 sensors and say a LUX sensor all using the two pins just as long as the device you're using has the power supply able to power these devices which most of these sensors they do have a small draw this example we're not going to use the Sonoff basic we're going to use a standard node MCU but we're only going to use two GPIO pins first what you'll need to do with your node MCU board is we need a flash Tasmodo on it and it's very similar to the flashing procedures we've shown with other switches except you don't have to hold GPIO 0 so to flash it all you do is plug in your USB cable and plug in the USB cable to the computer now some computers may need a driver for the type of serial USB chip that's on here and that's the CP2102 We'll leave links to the drivers if you need them in the description of the video. So all you do is you plug in the USB to the computer. You don't have to hold any pins and pull up the flash easy. Pick your COM port you need. We're gonna do our firmware. And we will leave a link to a firmware that has several of the sensors, including the MCP23017 board that's not in the pre-built binaries for Tasmoda. And this will help out some of the individuals that aren't familiar with building uh, their own Tasmoda binaries. So pick your firmware, and all you do is hit flash. As soon as you see this box, and it's writing flash, you know it's working and you may not be able to see it on the camera but you can there is a blue LED that blinks on the board itself uh, when it's writing the flash once that flash is written either go to use the Wi-Fi manager mode and connect with your phone or your computer or you can use the termite method and connect with the serial port and send over your backlog commands like we showed before with the SSID and your password send it on to your network also, if it, and same thing before, if it does get stuck during one of the resets, once you've written it and the termite is not coming back for you, you can push, there is a, one of these buttons just to the left right here, there is a, it's a reset button that will reset, just simply reboots the Node MCU without you having to unplug it and plug it back from the USB port. So first you'll need for the project are some jumper pins, a Node MCU flashed with Tasmoda. Once you have your Node MCU flashed with Tasmoda, unplug it and we'll wire it up. We're going to come off of 3.3 volts. We're going to use the white wire for hot and there's a ground pin right next to it. We'll use that for ground and we'll use D1 and D2 clock and data. We'll use the orange on D1 and we'll use the yellow on D2. Really simple, plug in your DuPont jumper wires and then to the BME 280, do the same thing. We're gonna do the white to voltage in. We'll do black to the ground. We'll do orange 
on the clock. We'll have to make sure and put these correct when we configure. And we'll use yellow for the data. And it's that simple. Plug in your four jumper wires from here to here, and you're ready to go. Now let's jump into the GUI. On your Node MCU, you'll go to Configuration and go to Configure Module. We're going to set this to Generic. Once you set the Generic, it'll reboot and you come back and you'll see all the GPIO pins available to you. Now if you remember, we did the yellow as SDA and orange as the clock. Orange is on D1 and orange is the clock. So for D1, if you scroll down, you'll see I2C I, or I squared C clock. And then for D2, we'll I squared C SDA is yellow under D2. And that's it. Save the two pins. You'll hit save. Give it a few seconds to reboot. And that's all there is to it. You can see you have the BME 280 as the temperature, as the humidity, as the pressure. And if you look in the console, telemetry, MQTT, pull the sensor BME 280, the temperature, humidity, and pressure. It shows the pressure unit and the temperature unit. You can see I squared C is very simple to add any additional sensor. Let's add another one. Very similar pinout. It's the SHT31. It only does temperature and humidity. Breakout board happens to be very similar with the same pinout voltage, ground, clock, then data. But you'll always want to pay attention. Some breakout boards will change these configurations up and you won't want to put voltage or do reverse polarity and end up smoking your sensor. So pay attention to that when you're wiring up your various sensors. To change sensors, I, we didn't change anything in the configuration. All you'll need to do is just plug it back in and Tasmoto will automatically pick it up. You can go to the console. There's a command you can type to pull, when I, we talked about the addresses, if you type in I2C scan and hit enter, you'll see that it found a device at 0x44. And usually each individual sensor will have its own unique address. And if you just look up the data sheet on your sensor and you can find all the various addresses. You just can't use two sensors that, that may happen to have the same exact address. As I said before, you notice the pinout's a little different. This one actually uses ground on one side and voltage on another. So do pay attention to that. You can see it's a lux sensor. We open it to the light and face it down. Very reactive. Again, same exact thing. You can go to the console and you can pull the illuminance for the BH1750. You can do additional rules based on each sensor. It'll do a rule every second or you can also do a rule based on the telemetry time. So but be careful with the one the rules you'll do on the one that are every second because you can end up spamming your MQTT server very quickly. So at this point, you're probably wondering, but wait, I thought you said you could do more than one sensor. Well, yes, we're going to do that. For this demonstration, we're going to show you doing it on a breadboard because it's very easily to split because you're going to have to split the voltage and the ground along with continuing to run uh, the clock and the data to each sensor. To off another device, you may do that with a small proto board uh, that your pins are connected together or some other you may split and splice your DuPont connectors and do do those that way so we're gonna put these on the breadboard we're gonna put 3.3 .3 on the voltage rail ground on the ground rail I'm gonna use D1 Breadboards, once you wire them, can start to look, can start to get very messy very quickly. But basically all we're doing here is we're jumping the ground and 3.3 voltage out to this top voltage and ground rail. D1 and D2 jump over to the first sensor, clock it is, and data. And then that jumps over to the BME280's clock and data bus as well. Each sensor grabs 3.3 volts and ground off of the top rail. So it's more like a leapfrog of the clock and data just jumps from sensor to sensor. And once you plug them in, Tasmoto will automatically pick them up and you'll see the two sensors. So let's jump into the GUI and check that out. So as you can see, Tasmoto automatically picked up the BME280 and the BH1750. And we are seeing, and we can cover the light, and you can see automatic updates. 
and probably if we put my finger close to the BME, which is a very sensitive chip for temperature and humidity. So that's all there is to it. You just connect up your sensors with I squared C. There are tons of sensors out there. If you go to the Tasmoto Wiki, they will show you there's all the various sensors that they support, and a lot of them will automatically get configured. So another cool little board is the ADS-1115. If you're familiar with the Note MCU, there's the A0 pin. And that's your analog put pin. Typically, you may use read analog values of 0 to 3.3 volts using the onboard voltage dividers that bring that down to the 0 to 1 volts, the ESP8266 ones. So it's a smaller range. So to get a higher resolution, the ADS-1115 is a 16-bit analog to digital converter, which is inputs, you have actually four channels, A0, A1, A2, and A3. Currently, right now, I have analog 0 tied to ground and analog 2 tied to 3.3 volts. Now, analog 2 and 3 are just out there floating, which typically you wouldn't want to do. You'd want to have those connected to a sensor of some sort. That's why they're going to be jumping around. It uses the same I squared C, and you can grab the same exact values off the ADS-1115, and you can see we have the A0, A1, A2, and A3 for each individual channel. Perfect little board you can use to expand the SP8266 and still be able to utilize Tasmoda that you already know. In this section, I want to cover a couple things that I've seen people have issues with trying to bring the sensor into Home Assistant. And where do they get the exact values and how do they change it for their sensor. So we hooked up the BH1750 uh, LUX sensor. Bring that into Home Assistant. The way we do that is we go to the console and we're going to need two values. So if we pull up as an example, if you go to the Tasmoto Wiki and go to the Home Assistant section and scroll down to section DHT22 sensor and we can take this code Let's copy and paste this code and we'll bring it into the configuration YAML and we'll put it in our sensor section and we'll change the name. Let's just call it MCU Lux. We'll change the unit of measurement to LX. We need to change the topic. We'll get that from the console. We need the Tele MCU I2C sensor section. We'll paste that in the state topic. We'll also take the topic and we'll change the last will and testament section. Next thing we need to do is the sensor name is not DHT22, of course. The sensor is going to be BHT1750. And just to save us a copy and paste by flipping back and forth, we'll take the illuminance as well. So BHT1750 goes in here and the illuminance goes in here and let's delete this section so it's going to pull the JSON for BH1750 and it's going to pull the illuminance section if you had other sensors like say the BME 280 you would put temperature then or humidity etc and you just copy and paste the element straight out of the console in our YAML we'll save it so we'll go into home assistant go to configuration general check config and restart. And once we restart, you see we have our LUX sensor. It shows unknown because the telemetry hasn't published yet, which by default is 300 seconds. Let's change it to 10. And now we have our LUX sensor. Make sure and check out part two of this series we're going to cover the MCP23017, which adds up to 16 input and output pins to the ESP8266 with Tasmoto. We're going to control a couple LEDs, a touch button, a motion sensor. We're going to show how to configure everything. We're going to do some advanced rules, so be sure and check it out.